Well, we're ready to start another repair job today. This time it's an Imari Japanese porcelain. Um, it's a, a big platter. Well, I think what they call a five color platter. It's five or six colors. And uh, it's not a real complicated job, but uh, it's a big platter. And uh, it's been repaired before and I undid the repair. It, it actually came apart and um, it took me a while to get all the old bonding agents off of it and now I'm uh, gonna rebond it and see if we can do a better job. Part of the problem is that uh, th it's not a tight fitting um, fit. When, when I put these pieces together you can zoom in on this half here. Uh, you can't, you probably can't, I know you can't see this in the video, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, I can get it perfectly aligned here and here, but then in here it's not. And there's actually a space, if I were to hold this up to the light, you could see light through it right here. And that applies to both halves of this. We have the same thing going on. And part of this is a part of the reason for this <clears throat> is uh, in this case it's a, a previous repair. There's a there's a chip on the back side that uh, is out of alignment and just enough to where it's not allowing other pieces to fit. But I can't get that apart, so I'm going to work around it. And the other issue is on a lot of uh, porcelains certain kinds of high-fired porcelains, um, you have this odd thing that happens in uh, firing ceramics. When f ceramics are fired, uh, they shrink. Different kinds of uh, ceramics shrink at different uh, proportions. Uh, it can be as much as 15%, which is a good deal. Um, uh, basically, one-sixth of a size in reduction in size. And so what happens in that is if it was just a shrinkage that would be not too much of a problem but what happens is well, you have different wall thicknesses along here and you have a compound curve, it's curved this way and curved this way. We we'll often get a, a result in some kinds of porcelains it's really dramatic but in this case it's it's extremely slight but it's just enough to provide uh, a, a, not a tight fit but what happens is it, the the thing warps and when it's fired you, you don't see that it's all under tension There's these internal stresses that happen in that shrinkage and then when it breaks that tension is released and it actually changes shape slightly and so it no longer fits on some types of bone china that can be extremely dramatic I've seen uh, I've seen cases where it's off by like this much, <laughs> where it will spring change that much. It's it's insane how how bad that can be. In this case, it's extremely slight, but it's just enough that um, I'm going to have to be careful of, of my alignment, and there will be some filling involved along this crack that. Uh, I would rather not have, but I'm stuck with what I have to work with. Anyway, um, even with all that, it's still a rather routine uh, repair of this sort of uh, object. And we're going to get right to it. Normally, I would tape this together dry with tape and um, get all my alignment worked out. And then uh, I would apply my adhesive to the outside of the crack and it would wick into it. In this case, since I have access and since I know there's going to be excess space in it, I'm just going to apply the Hixel to the thing before I tape it together. You've seen me do that on on other objects. Usually I do that when the walls are so thick that I can't depend on the, the Hixel penetrating far enough. And so I just want to make sure I have a good ample coating of it and it gets, gets on all that 
different thicknesses and we'll get good coverage. Just erring on the side of caution to get a good result. Okay, so we're going to use Hickstool to bond this together. This is good old good porcelain. And this is the product I'm using. I happen to get it from this pl this time. I got it from this place. They're a, a book binding supplier place. I don't know how that has, how they even use this stuff, but that's where I got it. What I do is I just go online when I need it, and I do a search on this or this, and whatever comes up with a good price, that's where I order it from. So if you want to use it, that's what you should do. Uh, anyway, um, that's what I'm using. So uh, in this case, uh, I already had some Hickstool mixed up for a previous job, and so it's not completely fresh. It's a, it's a day old. Uh, when it's fresh, it's kind of like water, and right now it's kind of like uh, thin honey. Uh, so it's going to spread okay, but I need a brush to do it, and I, it won't wick into the crack at, at this thickness. But I'm going to apply it to the edge and tape it instead of wicking into the crack. So I'm going to put this half of it together first. Plenty of working time. I don't have to worry about my glue setting up on me. It takes a couple of days for this to set up. If I don't put it in a hot box, if I put it in a hot box, I can speed it up significantly. And then how much depends on how thick I apply it and how thick the walls are so I'm gonna get my tape on here press it down keep it away from the edges just enough to hold it together okay so When we put this together, we try not to grind the edges together. It's very important that we get this end pieces lined up. And now I'm going to stretch and stick. Press it down with my fingernail, and now we go on the other side I use my thumbnail here to tell when I have the alignment correct and when I don't when my thumbnail doesn't get caught we're good okay now you can see there's a tiny bit of space right in here where you can't the edges didn't come together completely. It's very, very close, but not quite perfect. Okay, now care 
carefully turn it over and take the other side. And every time I put the tape on, I'm rechecking my alignment. And this line you're seeing is the bead of glue squeeze out. Alright, so I've added a little bit more tape because I'm going to be manipulating this large, heavy object and I don't want this alignment changing while I'm doing that. I mean, it's, it's something you need, really actually need to constantly adjust it. At least until I get this tape up finished. Like right now, I want to keep this immobilized as much as possible. And also, I want to wipe off any excess squeeze out because if it's going to be hard to keep track of where my hands are going, and I don't want to get this on me and spread it around. All right, I've applied glue to my edge here. And I'm going to put the two halves together. Stick it down good and tight, and then I can pull it, out, pull it together. And as you can see, there's a I got a good alignment here, good alignment here, and a big step right here. And that's all about that warpage I. One of the reasons I'm putting so much tape on here is it's a heavy object and once I set this down to cure, I don't want it to sag by stretching, pulling on the tape. And that's another reason I stretch the tape too. Okay, and now I do the other side of that. Because right now, this thing could swing open like a door. It's only taped on one side. Here on the edge, I've got perfect alignment. That is, I can't even feel that scrap, that crack right there.
But let's see, can you see this shadow here? So you can see here by this shadow just how much of a step there is. We have perfect alignment here. I have it almost perfect here. And there's a step going down here and it's going down on this. So this one's up and this one's up. And it's just the way that the, uh, the thing warped when it shrank. Now, I might be able to take a tiny bit of that step out here, but not much. But uh, I mean, this, this is not unusual, this, this kind of thing. And, um, you know, we'll fix it when we get to the uh, filling stage. I have to, I have to, even though these lines, even the lines here where it's perfect, we have to put a fill on that. There's a hairline crack there, and if I don't fill it, <clears throat> it'll show in the finish. Normally, this would go, if it was a smaller object, it would go into the hot box. And that would speed the curing. But this is so big and heavy that I don't want to take a chance in the, the tape getting warm and expanding and or stretching. And then I wake up tomorrow and all my alignment is off and it's bonded in that. I'll check this later today and I'll check it in the morning and again tomorrow afternoon and again the next day. Uh, Probably by tomorrow afternoon, uh, it, it will be on be beyond manipulating if it gets out of alignment. But up until then, we still have a little grace period to kind. Of, if it if it does slump a little bit, I can retape it if I have to. But uh, we'll back be back in uh, two or three days and start the fills on this. All right, it is now uh, three days later. And I've just taken the tape off of the glue, the glue up we did here with the Hickstall. And um, how do I know it's strong enough to pick up and handle and work with and move on? It, it, we haven't gone the full five to seven days to fully cure this, but it is strong enough for me to handle this and work with it. How do I know? Well, like a bell, if there's a crack in this that is not sound, it won't ring and so we we'll just do a tap test I'm holding it underneath in the center with my hand with my fingertips and if it rings like a bell it is sound it's a good job good glue job and so just like a bell won't ring correctly if there's a crack in it and I'm going to do my fills on this with this product. It's called Milliput. And the version I'm using is super fine white. Comes in about five or six different colors. But uh, I use white, terracotta, and black in my, in, uh, in my work. Um, mostly I use the white. And then once I mix it up, it's a two-part epoxy. And it's a putty and uh, now it looks like that when it's ready to work and I'm applying my milliput with this uh, little uh, putty knife I made custom made for myself it's a little stiffer than a palette knife different versions of varying degrees of flexibility. So I'm spanning this crack. One side of it is low and we're trying to ramp out that low spot. And now I'm scraping it off the high side. Putting it on the other side. And I'll file this down later. I mean, you've seen me do this on almost every job.
the step isn't all that big, I just go wide on it so I have room to work it. Most of this will be gone when I file it down. Anyway, I'm not going to make you watch me do the whole thing. I have two, three cracks here, and I'm going to fill them like this on both sides. I'll come back and show you what that looks like once I get all it all filled. And here's what the fill looks like before I file. And here it is after the filing.
So I've got a colored pencil here where I want to sketch in lightly the areas I need to paint. And it's not so much to get the color in there as, as to just give me some guidelines to work with. Be nice if I could use this as the color. I could just I, because I could draw this a lot easier than I could paint it.